Hi, and welcome to Dr. V's AP Chemistry Podcast. What I'd like to do in this podcast is show you how to calculate equilibrium concentrations when you're given initial concentrations. And these are a really important problem type in AP Chemistry and often referred to as ice problems or using ice tables. And that's really what I'd like to talk about with you because they're so important. I'd like to show you how to set up this table strategy to solve these problems. We'll use the reaction quotient as needed to predict whether the system will shift left or shift right to reach equilibrium, which sometimes it's obvious and sometimes it's not. We'll summarize just a general strategy, a process you can use for solving these kinds of problems, which as I said are really emphasized heavily, and complete some practice problems along the way. So what I'd like to do is show you a setup. Here's the system. A plus 2B react with C. This reaction establishes an equilibrium. But I'm going to set it up as shown here in this little diagram. So I've got a, what's supposed to represent a one liter box with half a mole of A, which are the little blue circles, and half a mole of B, which are the little stars. All right. So I'm setting it up with only reactants and no products. Clearly, I'm going to have to make some products to reach equilibrium. But I want to know exactly how much it's going to do. And this is where that ice table really comes in handy. So I'm going to set up a table, one column for each reactant and product, so A, B, and C. And I'm going to write in my initial concentrations the information I was given. All right, I for initial, C for how they change, E for what they'll be at equilibrium. So initially A and B were both 0.5 molar, right? I had half a mole in one liter for both A and B. But it was implied in the problem that no C was present at all. So the con initial concentration of C was zero. What we need to do is figure out how they're going to change. Well, I only have reactants. So I have to make some products to reach equilibrium, obviously. Um, I'm hoping it's obvious to you, right? Because I need to have reactants and products at equilibrium for both the forward and reverse reactions to be occurring. I have to shift to the right. So I have to use up some A and make some C and use up some B to make C. What we have to remember though is that the coefficients here aren't all one. The concentration of A has to drop by X, so that's a negative X change for A. The concentration of B has to change by negative 2X because of the coefficient of 2 for uh, in the balanced equation. And then the concentration of C has to increase by X in order to do that. So we can then think about the equilibrium concentrations in terms of x. So we're completing the whole table here. Such a useful strategy for solving these kinds of problems. Because now my last row algebraically tells me the concentrations of a, b, and c in terms of the amount of change. Let's look at a little more complicated situation. We'll use the same reaction. All right, so a plus 2b in equilibrium with c. We're given a value for the equilibrium constant, 1.35, which tells us that products are slightly favored at equilibrium, at whatever temperature we're doing. This is a very hypothetical situation. So we'll set it up where, again, our initial concentration of A and B are both 0.5 molar, and the initial concentration of C is 1 molar. So I've got five little blue circles and five stars and 10 little brown triangles for C. All right. But this isn't necessarily at equilibrium, and we need to figure out how it's going to shift to get to equilibrium. But we have a little work before we can do that. So we'll, we go and set up our table. Looks a lot like the table we did before. Column for A, B, and C, rows labeled I, C, and E. And we fill in that initial concentration information. 0.5 molar A, 0.5 molar B, 1 molar C. All right. Before I can go any further, because it's not immediately obvious if it's going to shift left or right, we really need to write a KEQ expression based on that balanced equation. And remember, of course, it's products over reactants, coefficients become exponents. So C over A times B squared gives us that general form of the equilibrium constant. Well, that's great. This is something we need to have for all these problems. Don't skip that step. But now what we can do is use that KEQ expression to find the reaction quotient. What's my ratio of products over reactants right at the beginning? All right, so I take my initial concentrations and substitute them in to the expression for K, but I'm going to call it Q because I don't know that I'm at equilibrium. And I'm going to put those in and evaluate it, and I get an answer of 8 or 8.0 if I'm being good about sig figs. But really what's important about Q is comparing it to K. Q came out to be 8. KEQ is 1.35. Clearly Q is bigger than K, which means 
at the moment the system was set up, there are too many products. I have to shift left to establish equilibrium. All right, so the concentration of A has to increase, the concentration of B has to increase by 2x, C has to decrease by x. And so again, we can come up with the equilibrium concentrations uh, in terms of these relative changes. All right, we're not going to actually solve this right now. That's not the, the intent. There's more to show you this really useful table strategy that we can use, do for so many problems. So let's generalize this. What do we need to do when we're solving equilibrium problems? First, write that KEQ expression. Don't skip that step. You're going to need it. You're going to set up your ice table like we just did in the two examples. You need to know how each species will change and what those equilibrium concentrations will be relative to that change. Depending on the problem, you may or may not need to calculate Q and compare it to K. Right? If you have all reactants, it's going to shift right. If you start initially with all products, it has to shift left. But if you're given initial concentrations of all the species in the equilibrium, you're going to have to calculate Q and compare it to K. You're going to take your equilibrium terms, substitute them into your KQ expression, and solve for X. Sometimes the math can get quite involved here, and occasionally you'll see problems that do require the quadratic equation, but not today. And then you'll calculate the equilibrium concentrations once you know X. So I'd like to actually do two problems with you. Here's the first one. Carbon dioxide gas reacts with hydrogen gas make carbon monoxide gas in H2O. This is a very classic reaction used for these. Notice the coefficients are all 1. I'm given a value for Kp uh, at a certain temperature. And then the question says, calculate the equilibrium partial pressures of all the species if the initial system contains a partial pressure of CO2 and a partial pressure of hydrogen gas of 2.00 atmospheres. All right, so remember our steps. The first thing we need to do is write that KEQ expression. In this case, it's a KP, so we could do it in terms of the partial pressures of each gas. Products over reactants, the coefficients are all 1, so the partial pressure of CO times the partial pressure of H2O over the partial pressure of CO2 times the partial pressure of H2. That's our form. Great. All right, we're going to need that, so don't forget it. All right, stop and write things down. Pause this whenever you need to. All right, I've got this math sort of all pre-written into the PowerPoint, so I'm just talking. All right, so we'll go and set up our ice table, right? A column for each reactant and product. We were given that the initial pressures of CO2 and H2O were both two atmospheres, implying that the initial pressure of CO and H2O were both zero. All right, so starting here with just reactants. All right, I don't have any products. I need some products at equilibrium. So my concentrations of CO2 and H2 have to drop both by X. My concentrations of CO and H2O both have to increase by X. All right, and so we can then write this in terms of the equilibrium concentrations. 2 minus X um, for the equilibrium concentrations or uh, pressures, excuse me, of CO2 and H2. And the partial pressures of CO and H2O are both X algebraically. All right, so what we can do now is substitute these back into that KP expression. You've got to have that KP expression. You can't do the problem without it. All right, and I just substituted everything in. All right, I can rewrite it in this form. It means exactly the same thing. But the reason I wrote it in this form is that it makes it a little easier to see that you have a perfect square. I can take the square root of both sides, all right, which just simplifies my math a little bit. All right, um, and that's all I'm doing. It's simple algebra skills you should have hopefully in your tool belt already. I'm just going to rearrange it. All right, multiply both sides by two minus x, um, distribute it, combine all my like terms, and I get a value for x of 0.88. All right. So once I've got that, all right, I can say, well, you know, if I go back to my ice table, I can see how the pressures of CO2 and H2O went down in terms of x. Etc. Since the value of x is 0.88, really all I'm just doing is substituting in my value for x here. The partial pressures of CO2 and hydrogen at equilibrium will be 1.12 atmospheres, and the partial pressures of CO2 and H2O will be 0.88 atmospheres. As a double check for yourself, if you want to make sure you're on the right track, you can take these values, substitute them back into your KEQ expression. You should get your original KP back, and you do. All right, let's go look at another problem. This one's a little bit more involved, but also very good. All right, and again, another classic problem. Nitrogen gas and oxygen gas react to form 2NO. 
All right, we're given a value for Kc. It's a very, very small value for Kc, which suggests or tells us that reactants are actually favored at equilibrium. That's great. Okay, and the question says, what are the equilibrium concentrations of all the gases? If the initial concentration of each gas is 0.3 molar. So let's remember the process. Always start with an equilibrium constant expression. This will be a Kc in terms of molarities. So we have those square brackets. We just are going to write the form as we always do. All right. And our next step will be to set up our ice table. All right. Um, so the initial concentrations of all three gases are 0.3 molar. But of course, I do have concentrations of reactants, all the reactants and products. So I'm going to have to calculate Q in order to predict how it will shift. We know the value of K is 0.0255. So to calculate Q, I'm just going to take those initial concentrations and substitute them into my Kc expression. I'm calling it Q because I don't know, you know that I'm at equilibrium, so Q, the reaction quotient, is just sort of a, a holding point just to help me work through the problem. Even without pulling out a calculator, it's very easy for me to see that that has to equal 1. All right. Well, 1 is greater than 0 0.0255, right? So that means... Since I have too many products, right, that's what it means if Q is too big. If the ratio is larger than the equilibrium ratio. Too many products, not enough reactants. I'm going to have to shift left to reach equilibrium. And this means I now know how to set up my ice table or to can fill the rest of it in. So the concentration of N2 has to go up by X. Concentration of O2 has to increase by X. The concentration of NO has to decrease by 2X because of the coefficient of 2. All right, and so then you have to incorporate that into the last row of the table. Great. So now I can put these equilibrium expressions into my KEQ expression and solve for x. The math here is going to be a little bit more involved than in the last problem, but nothing we can't handle. All right. If I can still do it after all these years, you can do it too. So I'm just substituting in you know, 0.3 minus 2x for the NO concentration, but that's got to get squared. And then 0.3 plus x times 0.3 plus x in my denominator. All right, which, of course, that's a square too. Oh, look, another perfect square. It's not always going to happen that way, but it does in this problem. All right, so I'll take the square root of both sides. All right, and I get an expression I can evaluate. I don't need the quadratic equation. Uh, my students know that will make me very happy. And then we're just going to solve for x. So we just, you know, rearrange, multiply both sides by 0.3 plus x. I'm going to distribute that, combine my like terms, put it all together, I get x equals 0.117. Now you do want to be careful when you're setting this up. You know, if you forget to do minus 2x or something, you're going to get numbers that don't quite work out. So just check your math when you're working. All right. So since I knew my ice table and I knew everything in terms of x, now that I've got a value for x, it's really easy at this point to solve for my concentrations. Nitrogen. And oxygen concentrations at equilibrium are 0.417 molar. And the NO concentration is um, 0.3 minus 2x, so I get a concentration of 0.066 molar. As a double check for yourself, you can always take these equilibrium concentrations, put them back into your KQ expression. You should get very, very, very close to the original KEQ value. And you do. Great. We'll do more practice problems at another time. That, that finishes up this problem.